Hello, this is Siren Football here for the previews of this weekend's quarterfinals of this year of the UEFA Euro 2020 tournament or 21 if you like me because I, I can't stand the fact they called it Euro 2020 but enough of that. Let's get on to this weekend's games. Switzerland versus Spain. I predict a 3-2 win for the Spanish. Both teams are, have played an extra 30 minutes because, of course, Switzerland had to go to penalties against France. Switzerland shocked us all by winning that penalty shootout and knocking the world champions France out of this year's championships. What a result. Oh my god, and I've got to give Switzerland praise. You know, Shakiri. okay, he wasn't at his absolute best, but he did work quite hard that game. Ed Bolo was quite good. Seferovic, two headers on goal. He's usually ragged on for missing chance after chance, but against France, he was absolutely top class. Shaka, a nod... Yeah, Granit Xhaka was absolutely fantastic in midfield against Pogba and Kante. I've got to say, France should have won that game, but France absolutely blew their gasket. While Spain, I've got to say, almost did do the same thing, but thankfully though, in extra time, Spain scored two extra goals to make it a 5-3 victory. But having said that, though, I don't think we're going to see another shock this weekend. It's going to be a... But I do expect an entertaining game because both sides are capable of scoring quite a lot of goals. Um, Yeah, 3-2 win for Spain. Um, In the later game, I expect a 2-0 victory for Italy. Belgium were... Play, uh, tactically got it spot on against Portugal. Of course, De Bruyne and Hazard were forced to go for injuries, but... Was yes, I know a lot of people say well, all they did was punt the ball to Lukaku, but you got to realise Lukaku did a brilliant job holding the ball up, making sure taking the pressure off his defence, giving them a break. Was you know they were spending the second half defending against Portugal, who could not get a shot on target to save their lives. I mean, Jao Felix was so poor with his shooting, and Ronaldo just you know you can tell he's thirty six years old. He just didn't look physically capable of pressing the Belgian defence anymore and I have to say you know a quite disappointing way for Portugal to go out but I've got to say though if De Bruyne and Hazard don't play I've got to say it's these chances of winning go up quite a fair bit and I have to say this Belgian team is clearly ageing they're not quite the force they were three years ago and it's surely going to be an Italian semi-final and I predict Spain and Italy are going to play each other in the semis. What a big, big game that's going to be. On the so-called easier side of the draw, in Saturday's games, Denmark, I predict a 2-1 win for Denmark against the Czech Republic. Um, I expect them to go into extra time. And, you know, I think Denmark are not going to quite destroy the Czechs like they did against Wales or Russia. But I still expect a Danish win. You know, Kasper Dolberg has been great. Dam scored another one on form. Andreas Christensen in defence has been very good. Paulson, Braithwaite, both also been quite good this tournament. And of course, Kasper Schmeichel has done well since, of course, that goalkeeping error against Finland. And as, of course, for the game, of course, you know what I'm very most concerned with. England versus Ukraine. It's going to be a 1-0 England victory because, you know, under Gareth Southgate, I, I don't really see any spectacular football being played. But, you know, weirdly enough, with now that we're playing 3-4-3, three, three, I mean, we are playing a very similar formation to what Brazil played in the 2002 World Cup. And you know what happened there? Although, having said that, we don't quite have the superstars Brazil had back then. But... On the Southgate, we keep continuing having clean sheets. We still have not conceded a goal. I mean, Jordan Pickford has been absolutely extraordinary in, betwe in between the sticks for England. Saving shot after shot, beating our defence out time and time again. Um, Stones has been pretty good this tournament. He's not actually made a mistake at all so far, which is quite impressive for... Uh, 
someone who can be quite error prone like him. Maguire's done well since his injury return with that ankle problem, but he looks absolutely fine. Rice and Phillips are very functional, although of course at, least at some point one of them's going to need a break. And possibly bring Jordan Henderson back in for Declan Rice to try and bring a bit more creativity to that midfield. Don't get me wrong, Rice and Phillips have been good, but I do want to see a bit more passing it from that midfield too. Um, I think we'll see... I've got to say, as much as I'd like to see Greenish start, he is so much better as an impact sub. And I've got to say, you know, Greenish has been carrying an injury during this tournament, so why do we need to start him? We don't need to start him. You know, we should carry on with our front three of Sterling, Kane and Saka. I mean, if, if, if he ain't broke, don't fix it. Bring Greenish on as a substitute from the 60-minute mark. We don't need to play... We don't need to stalk Greenish every game, okay? Like, there's no need to wear him out. He's our best player who picked up an injury last season for Aston Villa. Like, why do you want to risk him? There's no point, especially with Denmark most likely in the semi-final. Like, we really need to save him for those big moments. Because in football, especially when you get in the later stockout stages, it's about those big moments in the second half. And Greenish has proven that he is most effective when he's got a fresh pair of legs running at tired defenders ready to create chances to score those game-changing goals. Like, you know, and I know a lot of people moan about Salke is so defensive and all that, but the fact of the matter is he vindicated himself with that 2-0 win against Germany. He vindicated his style of football to everyone in Europe with how we be, how he helped us beat Germany. And frankly, I, I am not going to question him anymore. Unless, of course, we somehow lose to Ukraine. But seriously, are we going to lose to Ukraine? I mean, if we lost to Ukraine, it would be like losing to Iceland five years ago all over again. We It would just be so embarrassing. But as for Ukraine, though, you know, they've got some good players. Yaramchek, Yarmolenko, Sinchenko... Brazilian player Molos, who of course is another impact substitute, but really though, I mean, those Ukrainians must be knackered after playing an extra 30 minutes against Sweden, who I will say Sweden, I think, really should have won that game, and they had the bulk of the chances up to the 70th minute mark, but then, because Forsberg and his teammates could have put their chances away... They started to look really tired. And then, of course, in extra time, Danielson got himself sent off when he went knees, when he went in with that studs up challenge. And I have to say, Sweden were absolutely screwed after that once they went ten, went down to 10 men because of his red card. And you trained in the last minute of extra time, pulling, you know, a brilliant ball from the left-hand side, got crossed in, and the Rob Beck scored a fantastic winner and but having said that Ukraine must be knackered from that game like having to go the extra mile and you've got to realize of course Ukraine are the sort of team that scraped by like they lost to Austria and Holland in the group stages and they literally only managed to get into the last 16 but despite having only scored three points because of that win against North Macedonia and having a goal difference of minus one yeah, that's a team that is really scraped by, to be honest. Surely England cannot lose to Ukraine, otherwise I'm just gonna bloody blow a gasket. But no we you know, knowing England we, we do have a habit of losing really stupid games, but looking at my predictions from the for the last sixteen, there was a possible twenty four points for me to score since of course I gave myself one point for the correct result. Another point for the correct scoreline and another point for a correct prediction of whether it would go to extra time or penalties. And out of a possible 24 points, I only got 5 points because, of course, Belgium and Portugal I predicted to be 3-3. Free -free. And then, of course, it'd be a 5-3 win on penalties for Belgium. But, of course, it was a 1-0 victory for Belgium. And, no, and it didn't go into extra time or penalties. I predicted a 3 0 win for Austria, but for Italy against Austria, I beg your pardon. But of course, it actually went into extra time and it was a 2 1 win, only one point again. 
I predicted a 1 0 win for France against Switzerland, but no, the Swiss won it on 5 4 on penalties, no points there. I also predicted a shock for Croatia 1 0 win for Spain after extra time. Um, totally wrong prediction and scoreline again, but I did predict extra time correctly, so that's another point. Um, I predicted Sweden 2 0 win against Ukraine, but of course it was a 2 1 win for the Ukrainians after extra time, no points. I also predicted a 2 0 win for Germany after extra time, but no, completely wrong, complete no points there. We all knew what happened there. I predicted a 2 1 win for Holland against the Czechs after extra time. No, none of that happened. It was the other way around yet again. And I also predicted a Denmark 3 1 win against Wales. Um, in the end, of course, Denmark won 4 0. So that's actually two points because, of course, I also predicted that the game would not go into extra time. So, I mean, out of all the result predictions I got right, I think the one between Denmark and Wales was the one I came closest to getting fully correct and all but three points. Not sure whether I'm that confident of getting all 12 points this weekend, but we'll wait and see. So, if you're anticipating this weekend's games like I am, please like, subscribe to, Chris to Siren Football and go to F1 for my crystal racing stuff and I'll see you again next time.